Kylo asks Rey to join Kylo in ruling the galaxy after they've killed Snoke. And I just don't understand why Rey doesn't join. Let's, let's watch and analyze. Time to let old things die. Snoke, okay. Skywalker, the Sith, Jedi, the Rebels, let it all die. Rey, I want you to join me. We can rule together and bring a new order to the galaxy. Don't do this, man. Please don't go this way. No, no, you're still holding on! Let go! Do you want to know the truth about your parents? Or have you always known? You've just hidden it away. You know the truth. Say it. Say it. They were nobody. They were filthy junk traders. Who sold you off for drinking money? The dead. In a pauper's grave in the Jakku Desert. You have no place in this story. You come from nothing. You're nothing. But not to me. Join me. So the status quo has treated Rey extremely poorly. Right. She's been a scavenger on Jakku, left for dead as a child, abandoned by her parents. Trauma, difficult upbringing for mm, like days. A decade and a half, maybe a decade of yeah. just loneliness and not feeling like a part of the community. And here Kylo is saying, throw all that away. All those people that treated you like crap, throw it all away. And join me and you will be part of something i'm asking you me as kylo i'm asking you to join me i want you to join me that I, the fear of abandonment she would that she's been running away from her whole life she's now belonging to something why did she not join and it's not only belonging to something but it's belonging with a group with a peer that understands your force abilities like she can hang out with Finn and Rose and, and Poe, but like they just they won't understand her on the same level as Kylo does. That's right. So she, she should be primed for reaching out for connection. In fact, she like super rapidly wanted to reach and connect with Han. Mm -hmm. And so here's someone reaching out to her, reaching out to her. Yeah. And she says no. And it's so appealing. It's just so uh, the fear of abandonment, the lack of parental figures growing up. The fact that somebody wants to, her to join, the fact that they could make a difference in the world, the bad guy Snoke is gone. It just makes so much sense for them. And they have a dyad. It makes so much sense for them to join up and do this together. It's, it's it, not saying character flaws. I'm saying her weak points, like the, like the, mm -hmm. the points in her personality where they're really should be a softness a, a weak spot a, a point yeah. that someone could could a, a, point, a topic that's really sensitive to her there was something that's that fine. she should be reaching for fulfillment and uh, and here it is offered on a silver platter so it's it feels like she's just i'm gonna do good stuff i want to be the good person but like yeah. it makes no sense for the character of ray to not say yes here given her trauma given her character flaws given the things she needs to overcome and hasn't yet she's still like 18 she's still very young yeah yeah I, I just it, uh, i feel like yep. this to me this is where star the, the disney star wars trilogy had a turn where i was like this is the point where ray should have joined kylo and the redemption Ooh. arc for ray and kylo is to to get out of the dark side and the reason they're there is because of childhood traumas because of flaws they have in their personality and right now we've destroyed any kind of redemption arc or character development for ray it's over she's just good the whole way through that's right oh. she's just good that would have been an incredible episode nine we need a fan fiction rewrite that's right that would be incredible. Very, very great. So yeah. they both go to the Sith, and then they have to teamwork each other to turn the Sith into something good. By that, you mean climb out of the Sith and become right. good together. Together. And they have to overcome their their flaws. They have to overcome yeah. their flaws, yeah. somehow grow beyond it. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's flaws that they couldn't have handled independently. They yeah. needed each other. And a part of that for Rey is falling to the dark side, at least temporarily, but falling yeah. to it. Frustrating. Frustrating. There is a also, good story. He's the leader of the entire First Order. Yeah. That's a powerful dude. That's sexy. That is, yeah. 
I mean, he is. They're romantic. They are teetering on romance. They're teetering. Yeah, they are. So they could be this like power couple. I mean, there's just so and many things piling to, up. They don't know. have to do evil. Like, they could just be in charge of the first order and do good stuff. Like, right? Well, is it isn't that part of the appeal of the dark side? Is it gives you a lot of power from the outset that you convince yourself you're going to do for good eventually you know ends justify the means sort of things and then you fall yeah i guess i guess for example all of the first order planets are not starving like they've got the logistics figured out to handle mm -hmm. all that like that is a quantifiable good that they've done for mm -hmm. those planets and and how did palpatine convince anakin to join well through wanting to save padme that's good he thing. went through a good route not through like you want to do evil he got him on a weak point i mean how did palpatine get that first galactic empire set up it was for safety and security safety and security so you hit yeah. people at their weak points that's the appeal of the dark side it can bring order to the chaos gosh and then all of those instances the dark side offered something that the the other that the, the convincey the person that needed to be convinced yeah they offered something that they needed, that something that was yeah. missing their life that had some type of imperative for them to fulfill. And so so Kylo offers Rey belonging. Like belonging. Membership. Like, you can be with me. And I understand you. You understand me. Mm -hmm. We can do this together. And, and the power to fix the galaxy so her childhood isn't repeated. It's she just so slaps it away. Just no. No, I'm good. It would have been a wild episode nine. Uh, uh, it would have been. Enjoying? That would have been. Yeah. That would have been groundbreaking. I think so. Instead, we get cool knife tricks, which are That's, cool. Uh, uh, they're cool. I they're mean, cool. yeah, I'm actually cool. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Oof, cool. Oof, what a way to go. So I remember watching this in theater. I was like, oh, oh, oh very cool, very <laughs> clever. And I think this was before the Game of Thrones, before the Arya Stark. So when yeah. I saw for, when Arya Stark, I was like, oh, they did the same thing. Like, all right, that's not so amazing. But um, this thing, this this is the this might be mm -hmm. the coolest kill I've ever seen in Star Wars. Like, yeah, it's, it's pretty like cool. Lightsaber on off, stabbing people. In fact, in fact, if <laughs> I had a lightsaber, I would have that lightsaber on like a rapid switch, like on off, on off, on off. <laughs> like, try to defend me now. Like, you think we're going to clash swords? <laughs> like, no, you're going to miss, and my yeah. lightsaber is going to turn back on in your body. <laughs> Gosh, I guess eventually force users would figure out how to time stuff, right? Mm -hmm. If you had a, you had some sort but if, of But at the beginning, they're like, what are you doing? And I'm there with my lightsaber. I'm like, doo -doo -doo -doo, like super fast. Like, what are you, why do you hold the lightsaber like that? <laughs> on, on. Yeah, for, the, for a window of time while you're trained up on it and they're not, mm -hmm. you would have a significant advantage. <laughs> Huge advantage. Like, and now this is when we strike at the Sith. Like our lightsabers are mm -hmm. on off all the time. I mean, you could still even block like lasers and blasters. Mm -hmm. because you just need to time it you could sort of see it coming It'd be harder but you have the force at your side yeah i guess i guess wait, wait what am i doing i would turn it on and off when i wanted to if i'm blocking if i'm blocking blasters mm -hmm. or if i just want to actually block things i would just leave it on so you could have several modes like fully That's on right. multiple frequencies dialed in oh just like a flashlight yeah you can like different mm -hmm. intensities and like different flash rings like yeah mm -hmm. yeah yeah this scene go ahead go ahead Go ahead. It's just it breaks the universe. So this is the Holdo maneuver. Holdo does light speed into the fleet of the mm -hmm. First Order. Not only does she kill the main ship, she kills the multiple support ships behind it. This mm -hmm. is such an overpowered suicide run at light speed. Why aren't we making, why isn't anybody doing research on new weapons tech using light speed? Let's see it in action first. Let's see it in action. Boom. Oh my gosh. Like, sp it's devastating. Just everything in a cone behind it. Like a few, a few miss it, a couple, but large cone, a large solid mm -hmm. angle, just everything in there. Just right. Cone. And considering she used one ship that's actually not that large to take out, how many are we looking at here? We're looking at the main ship plus at 15, least 10 others. Something like that. Yeah. Something like that. Just the, I mean, incredible weapon. You you would just do this all the time. You you yep. get like an engine plus a lead block and like a either a pilot if you have to, or just an autopilot. Sure, sure. 
I mean, you could make also little missiles out of it. You get a little yeah, light speed thing on it, a little missile, do little mini ones. Yeah. You could do, there's all kinds of things you could do with this. And it's, Gosh, I, the light speed engines are probably- as possible and you make a shotgun. Yeah. That's right. I mean, if the light speed engines are expensive, it's still worth it because the amount of damage it's you're able to do is so it. enormous. Look at all these people hold or kill. It's gonna take them 20 years to get them trained up to be a soldier again. Get, like get the next generation up. of people. Yeah. But in, in the Rise of Skywalker, that one guy does say it's a one in a million shot. Okay. That means it's unlikely to actually have happened. So so if it's, if it's an actual one in a million, like that's an actual number and not just an estimate, then I would make a million. <laughs> I would make a million yeah. ships. If it was, if it is actually like 10 million, I would make 10 million of them. And so mm -hmm. then one of them is going to shoot through here and mess up the ships. Like, sure, that's great. I, that's what I would do. I just man, right. mass manufacture this. Right. So if it's in the, if it's one in a million, I think you could overcome the probability, the low probability of one in a million by just mass manufacturing missiles, ships, and stuff that are ready to sacrifice themselves to attack a fleet. I mean, heck, a baseball at near light speed, that's sure. lots of damage. Sure. So, but maybe in the Rise of Skywalker, when that guy said one in a million, he really meant one in a huge number. And if it's like one over... I see. Okay, so like the, the number of combinations of a deck of cards is 52 factorial. Okay. Which is, is an incomprehensibly large number. It's just so big. So if it's like one over 52 factorial, then it's never going to happen. If it's one in a million, it's overcomable, maybe. So... So what you're, what you're saying is, so in, in the last, no, no, in the Rise of Skywalker, a guy says, like, it's at a one in a million shot, and that's how they say, like, we're not going to do it again. Yep. But you, so you're saying, like, what if it's not actually a one in a million, it's a one in a big number, and since he's a human brain, like, mm -hmm. if you visualize $1 versus $10 versus $100, okay, a thousand, like, dollar bills, like, okay. But once you start getting into 10,000, like, what is it, what is $10,000 stacked up with? I, I don't know, I don't know. Yeah. like. And then at that point, 1 million, 10 million, like a 2 billion, like it's all just mound of money. Like, I don't know how to yeah. visualize it. So you're saying that this guy, maybe he didn't actually mean one in a million. He meant it's a huge number and it's totally not doable. But so, I guess, ex so, so that means he's, me, he's a, the expectation this would work is exceedingly small. That it's, it's not gotta, worth pursuing. It's gotta be, right. It's got to be so small that it's not worth us developing, researching, building the tech but also big enough for us to know about it, right? Because if it's super mm -hmm. small that if no one's ever seen it, it wouldn't even be on our radar. Like nobody would right. know about it. And it has to be large enough that it actually occurs here. Because right. if the probability was one over 52 factorial, it's never gonna happen. Yeah, But you, you wouldn't even try it. So it needs to be small enough that it's not worth pursuing, but large enough that you see it every once in a while. Which means Haldo would not have expected this to work. Yeah, 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 yeah. What if she wasn't using it as an attack? She was just trying to jump. <laughs> just like, right? Because it, if it's a one in a million chance of yeah. this being an attack, that means it's every other percentage chance that this is just your way out. That's right. If so, the fleet's going this way, I'm going to turn around and go the other way. So... She plays politics on the ship to make sure mm -hmm. that she gets full credit for the escape. Full credit. Full credit. And then she's she's a coward and she's running away and she wants everybody to think that she died. Mm -hmm. And so she runs away and she's completely leaving that life behind. But, but it accidentally that, that, does this. Yeah, and she got a whole maneuver named after her. <laughs> they think it, the people in the rebel uh, in the rebellion think it's a heroic sacrifice, but actually she was running away. She was actually running. And she, and she got lucky. Or unlucky, depending on who you're talking to. <laughs> yeah, Either way. I mean, the, the logic's tight. If, if, if yeah. it's an insignificant chance of this being an attack, then it's probably not going to be an attack. She's banking on it as an escape. Mm -hmm. So I think with this, so in summary, in order for this not to break the universe, the probability of this working has to be low enough that yeah. it's not worth pursuing for R&D, mm -hmm. high enough that you see it every once in a while, mm 
-hmm. Holdo is a coward and running away and accidentally caused this to happen. That's our explanation. Logic's tight. Yeah, well, I like Logic's it. Logic's tight. Like Logic's tight. But I don't like Holdo, so it's even better. <laughs> also, I don't want this to be a thing in the universe because otherwise you would just do this all the time. Right. Instead of costing human lives on bombing runs, mm -hmm. you just send blocks on engines. Yeah, and I guess the Empire would stop making, or First Order or whoever would stop making these large bulky ships because yeah. they're vulnerable to this attack. So the Star Destroyer, the Death Star, all of that would just be out of the universe. I guess I would still have destroyers and they would still have TIE fighters for close range defense. Yeah. But other than that, I'm just bombarding people with these rocket engine faster than light missiles. Right. I would make ships that just hold these faster than light ships that just as soon ah, as I see something, I deploy it's, them out. You'd have two destroyers that mm -hmm. work as an escort for this, like, I don't know, carrier that just mm -hmm. deploys out these missiles. That's right. And I had to have, I would have a person on the different ships aiming the missiles remotely. Or maybe even automated. I, mean, I don't we've know. We've got droids in this. We've got droids. That's right. Did One droid per. Yeah. We, got to we got targeting computers. Sure. Sure. Easy. You're telling me a Star Destroyer doesn't have a server farm? You don't even need one joy per. Just put it up in the cloud. I mean, that's one of the reasons Star Destroyer is so big is maybe to have massive computing power on board. It's mostly server, the entire, the entire thing. It's just all server. <laughs> it's just a roving cloud. <laughs> okay. So, next one. Finn. Finn is a weapons master. This is my headcanon. So, mm -hmm. Finn, like, I really wanted him to be the, the next Jedi, but it turns out he's not the next Jedi. But he's mm -hmm. clearly, like, force sensitive somehow, right? And so, this is my headcanon that he's a weapons master. Like, some people put their character points into, into like, force push, some people in the first chirp. And Finn is just, I dumped all my points into being good at weapons. Like, here's this weapon, the stun baton. And he's never used it before. Like it's a rare weapon. Like it's mm -hmm. we've seen it at that one guy before, that 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 traitor, um, TR eight R. But other than that, like we've never seen it used by any troopers. But Finn here, super good. Finn! Against Phasma. Yeah. He's already doing moves. He knows the the skill set, like the weapon, the tactics. He got this like trick shot. Yep. Hey. Like he's supposed to be a regular stormtrooper, trained in blaster mm -hmm. stuff, but he's got all sorts of hand-to-hand -hand combat stuff, like skills, skills that he just just got it. He, yeah, he knows how to handle. He seems to be able to pick up a new weapon and use it to kind of a really adept degree, Agreed. like within seconds. Yep. He did it with a lightsaber. He did it with mm -hmm. this thing. Mm -hmm. I think there was another example where he just picks up a weapon. It's he's blasters. Just, he's yeah. Just, yeah. Oh, oh and, and, the, and the Millennium Falcon, he jumped onto the, the dorsal turret and he's all pew, 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 pew. Oh, pew. that's right. Not a problem. Not a problem. He knew how to maneuver it and like aim things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so he's just a weapons master. He just any any weapon he picks up, he gets a plus two. That maybe is his force skill. I think so. More, I think it's more than it's got to be more than plus two. I mean, it's got to be like plus two out of three. <laughs> plus two out of three. Okay, okay. out of twenty. Out of normal, out of twenty. He's got a plus. I don't know, fifteen. Yeah. So everything. He's not master. He's not perfect. He still got beat by Phasma. You know, a little bit here. Yeah. But like, he's good. He's good with this. He's good. He just he starts at a fifteen, and everybody else starts at one. And so here is more examples of Leia's leadership problems. In fact, it's so bad that she, she blames the entire galaxy for her lack of leadership. Let's watch. Wait, what? What? Come on. We have allies. People believe in Leia. They'll get our message. They'll come. But we have to buy time. Our distress signal has been received at multiple points, but no response. They've heard us, but no one's coming. No one's coming. We fought to the end. But the galaxy has lost all its hope. The spark is out. How do we build the rebellion from this? We have everything we need. So Leia says the spark in the galaxy is out. Now, I wonder, is there a person who's force sensitive, comes from royalty and power, 
who maybe is in a leadership position who may be able to foster hope throughout the galaxy. Does that person exist in the universe? That person is Leia, mm -hmm. and she has completely failed at yep. building any kind of movement throughout yep. the galaxy. And then when the movement fails, she's like, galaxy's fault. Galaxy did it. They lost I their mean, spark. It's their fault. Not my fault. Their fault. I mean, I mean, let's take it from the perspective of a regular person inside the galaxy. You see the Empire <laughs> yeah. is there, and there's a rebellion, and it's like yeah. ragtag, and then mm -hmm. the Empire falls. And you're like, okay, rebellion. Yeah, okay. pretty good. Oh, and Leia. the First Order comes back up, and you're like, oh, yeah. this rebellion is not doing what it was supposed to mm -hmm. do. It, it, we're, we're back in this. We're back in having yeah. the totalitarian stuff. Right. And so then the rebels are like, please come help. Please come help. And you're like, I really don't think you guys got it. You guys have been struggling for a long time and you guys are on your last yeah. leg. Like, I, I don't want to go out there just yeah. to die. Right? Yeah. And you, you won. It. And then the leadership of the rebellion, who is now the new republic, has completely failed. Why would, I join? Why would I join? Why, why would I join you? You guys failed. I'm just going to get me. killed. It's not me and the same leadership that, that made the New Republic or let the New Republic fall. It's everyone else. Everyone else, yeah. Galaxy's fault. They didn't step up. I didn't do well, anything. Why would they? I didn't do they? anything. I didn't do anything. Galaxy's but we fault. have everything we need. We have everything we need. A couple people. Except and... for allies from the galaxy to come and help us. <laughs> 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 I mean, at this point, didn't they say they're down to like 400 people? I mean, this yeah. organization is, is essentially gone. It doesn't exist anymore. Right. Their whose small fault is that? Is less than 400 people. Yeah, whose fault more. is that? It's not the leadership of the rebellion. It's the galaxy's fault. Their spark. It's no, gone. No, they, don't, they don't have the spark, even though it's me who gives them the spark. No, they don't. Me, if they just recognize me as, this, as the best leader, it'd be fine. It's their Savage. fault. <laughs> Brutal. Okay. Okay, Leia. Okay, Leia. Gosh, this whole trilogy is like an indictment on Leia and her leadership. Failure. Just bummer because, like, I like I like her. I, I like her, but yeah, bummer. Yeah. Okay, this thing. This is also weird. Super, weird. super weird. I don't understand why it was like this. First of all, what is it? A battering ram cannon. Miniaturize that Star Tech. It'll crack that door open like an egg. A what now? A battering ram cannon. A battering ram cannon. <laughs> so, so it's a, it's a battering ram, and a cannon. Yep. Why, why do you need? Why do? You, why do those two things need to be together? If it's a battering ram, you're bringing up the door and you like you batter the door and you, you, with, you ram it. Mm -hmm. if it's a cannon. Mm -hmm. You can shoot. So why? <laughs> what, what, what are we doing with this thing? So I think it's not a battering ram, in the literal sense. It's a cannon that acts as. A battering ram it's, but then that's just a cannon but like it, it happens to be a battering ram because you pointed it at a door i mean i guess like, oh, oh old, i get it i get it the guy the only the control... use case for this is hitting a door like there it is hoth that's <laughs> it that's the only use that's case it. you turn a little bit to the side and the guy in the control room is like oh that's a mountain i know i'm i'm not authorized to shoot that is that a no. door okay i shoot that i'm a battering yeah. ram cannon guy is that an enemy encampment? Is it a, is it protected by a door? If they're not protected not by a door, door, this is not the use case. Ooh, they open the door. I refuse to shoot. Yeah, it's open. Job done. I battering ram with my cannon things. This is Which just, also this is such a weird device. I don't get it. It also means the first order is like they're so prosperous. They have so much money. They're just like you know what, battering ram cannon. Send it. Do it. Whatever. Yeah, let's that, just build it. Just build just it, build whatever. It. And if they have one, that means they transported it from wherever they have. Yeah. If they didn't have, if they have more than ones, that means they have multiples of these floating around in nearby so that if there's ever like a wall or a door, they can just bring it down. Why not obliterate the entire mountain from orbit? That's right. <laughs> what are they trying to, what, what? Yeah, why don't they just bombard it from, plant, from the orbit? I mean, what, rebellion what isn't trying to. What, what are they trying to capture alive? Yeah, who are they trying to capture alive? There's no force user that they want to capture alive. There's nobody in the rebellion that's important enough to capture alive to like hold hostage or like get on your side to sway the masses because the masses even, are already. Even if there was someone to hold hostage, like you have the entire rebellion here. Like who are you going to, who are you going to trade for? 
That's right. You just kill them all. Just kill them all. I mean, even if you can't obliterate the inside of the mountain, collapse the entrances. I mean, there are ships. Yeah, yeah. Just destroy the entire thing. I don't, I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't understand why we're wasting time doing this. We'll talk more worse. about their wasting time. It gets worse. The good thing, though, is that Finn is a pilot. He's, he's such a weapons master. Like, he can just do anything you need. Mm hmm Big gun. Our only shot is right down the throat. Yep. Okay. Can is opening. This is our chance. All right. Make my final approach. Target in sight. Guns are hot. No. Pull off. No. I won't let them win. Okay. 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 The ship's falling apart. So when did Fun become a pilot? I mean, he's it's sort of a pilot, but yeah, these these are complex machines. How would he know how to drive them? And not only like drive them a little, like full on, full tilt, going into combat, right. maneuvering it like just right, mm -hmm. dodging stuff. Gosh, and he goes full throttle. Like things are the wing is starting to break down, and he so he and so he full throttles he takes it up in the air these things are are skiers they're skitters yeah. they're they're like designed to have the foot on the ground for support but he takes it in an irregular flight mode like yeah he's so he, good at flying he can fly this machine beyond what it's supposed to be flown i mean Palace. this is this is his force power we said he's able to pick up a new tool mm -hmm. and use it pretty optimally pretty fast right this isn't just just cruising across the salt flats like this is combat like you're dodging the weaving and bobbing around mm -hmm. and he just picks it up right not in fact he, he's so good he's got the he knows where all the controls are he's not fumbling or even hesitating he knows he goes he takes the thing out of its optimal flight envelope he knows how to adjust it's i mean it's incredible yeah my head cannon is finn is a weapons master just anything anything that can kill people or hurt them He's good at it, but yeah. yeah. Okay, my head. There's, there's. It gets weirder. So, oh, yeah. We got to it. This is so, weird. So here's the the first order, and yep. here's the rebels and the ships that they just found, and there's all of this space, like all yep. of this attack angle. So like, yeah, they have to stay on the ground, but you could you could attack the first order from the right, from the left, from weird angles, and they just go straight to it. All right. So imagine this is a video game. And you're one of the pilots of these skitters. Um, the first thing you're going to do is get out of the line of fire of the big boys coming at you. Yep. You're going to go left. You're going to go left. You're going to go right. You're going to do something so that you can come around the side. It's just instinct almost. Yep. The other weird thing is that how many of these are there? If we count Two, them up. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, thirteen. So you've got 13 of these things that are broken down. You have pilots who aren't even trained on them mm -hmm. going up against this enormous force. Is this even worth attempting? It's not even worth Just don't even send it. Gosh, it's not going to make a difference. You're, 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 it's you, a fly, are going to the fly swatter. <laughs> what are you doing? Yeah, what's the point? Weird. And Weird. Kylo Ren and Hux come down. Yeah. Why would they... Why would they put themselves at any kind of risk like this? There's two two big guys. You know, and it, Snoke's gone now. This Wait, these two gone? are Snoke yeah, is Snoke's dead. Yeah, yeah. These two are the head of the first order. And they want to I mean they they've got cameras, right? Just watch it from yeah. orbit. Yeah, send your guys down. What what are we doing down there? We could de the rebels could decapitate the first order with one swift stroke. That's right. They're putting the entire first order at risk. Mm -hmm. And then this thing, like, if if this is this is a battering ram cannon, all right, sure, whatever. It's super immobile. Yep. And so then they drop it down here and then drag it across the desert. Like, yep. why don't you just drop it where you need it to be? Mm -hmm. You you have all of space in which you could come down to the planet and then just drop this thing where you need it to be. And you have air superiority, so it's not like the rebels are attacking you while you're landing, so you got to land it far away. No, you could just. Mm -hmm. You can just land it wherever you want. In fact, you can land this entire squadron of walkers and mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, this draggy boys and this cannon. Yeah, in fact, this landing. thing, this 
How did this cannon get down to the surface of the planet? It was dropped down by a ship. Yep. So just be like, hey, driver, can you can you go up a mile? Like drop yeah. us off up there. Land, the bus driver is like, drivers like, no, this stop is here. Ding. <laughs> get out of the bus. <laughs> okay. Now I'm going to wait 45 minutes while this thing drags along the salt flats. <laughs> and you had enough time for the, the, the transport carrier to reattach and pick you up and move you closer. Yeah, move you closer. So What's... weird. What is the point of this? I don't know. Okay, I man, look at look at all these guns. Look at all these guns on the walkers. So you get the little walkers yeah. from the original series, and you get mm -hmm. the big boy walkers from the new series, and all of their guns face forward. So why aren't why aren't these guys these guys going to the side? Attack them from the side or from Attack behind? From the side. That's that's the well known tactic against these things. In fact, this is what we saw in in yeah, yeah, yeah. like they go up to the front and like it's, there's no guns in the back. Isn't this exactly what they did in Star Wars Empire Strikes Back? Five? Mm -hmm. yeah yeah it's like you get an a-wing out here you go from the side and you wrap them up right Do the same so thing. you don't you don't stay forward of them because that's where the guns are that's where the guns are you go you stay aft so the the little skitters or whatever they're called would immediately go parallel to the wall you get like head. a couple people that goes forward and everyone else would yeah. go to the side yeah and sweep make these big old sweeps around yeah makes uh, doesn't make sense why why drag this thing across the desert? Just drop it off here. Just drop it off right there. And they're awfully forward. Just hang out on the back. They're Please so hang out on the back. They're so confident in air superiority. They've got Hux and Kylo in that shuttle, defenseless, hovering above the thing. There's really no reason why not to just drop it off right here. Yeah. You have you clearly have the air superiority. Just do it. Just do it. So, so weird. weird. Okay, and then it's, I have more headcanon. So I call it forced listening for for Rose. Okay, okay, watch, watch. I'll break it down. Okay, ready? Watch. I won't let them win. Okay, okay. First thing, first thing, first thing. First thing is Pose. Uh, yeah, po no. Finn, Finn's really angry. So he like, he like pulls up the microphone. Yep. Okay. But what that does, listen, it, it, it turns off his headphones. Like I get it if he turns away the microphone because I don't want to talk to you. But yep. That also turns off the headphones, so he doesn't. He also doesn't hear. Let's watch. Let them win. Like it cuts her off. Yeah. So I had a pair of gaming headphones uh -huh. where if you put the mic up, it would mute the mic, but I could still hear through the headphones. And, and that makes sense because like the microphone's here in front of my mouth because I want to talk to someone. I move mm -hmm. out of the way. I don't want to talk to them. Yeah. But that also turns off the headset. Like I can't hear anyone if I if I turn it away. And yeah, you would still want to hear through yeah. the headset. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. And then the weird thing is that he turns off his microphone and it's like yeah. a click. And then and then Rose immediately is like, he turned off his microphone. Like she could <laughs> hear that from her cockpit in the wind. Well, they have a little indicator light that gives everybody's um, headphones and mic status in the cockpit. Right there, red or green. Instead of, instead of like a radar, it's just a full panel of like 12 or 13 <laughs> red or green dots. That's right. <laughs> I need to know the, the communication awareness yeah. of my entire fleet. Just, That's right. It is weird that she knew. Like immediately, you know, it's like, I think her first power is listening. Also, she knew where she he was. She immediately turns and vectors in. So it actually it actually gets worse, but I, I didn't I didn't make a video out of this. So so she's already turned around. Mm -hmm. She listened to the order from Poe to to abandon, right? Finn goes forward into the attack and he like throttles up. Yep. But she is somehow able to turn around and collide with them from the side. Yep. So her ship is just super fast too. So assuming they have the same capability, they all the ships are the same and they all have the same top speed. There's no way she's going to catch him. Right. But maybe they're dilapidated and hers has a higher top speed than his because that's, of that's good point. it's fallen apart. Because these things have not been maintained. So maybe he yeah. just got the bummer, not not as fast yeah. one. That's possible. So he's just like plodding along. <laughs> Full throttle. 40, yeah. 40 miles per hour. <laughs> 40 okay. miles per hour. Yeah. They're like, oh, what is this guy doing? <laughs> Like, like General Hawks is like, uh, there's someone creeping up on us. <laughs> cre cre creeping up on us, yeah. <laughs> After uh, Rose crashes into Finn, Rose says, "You got we got to protect the people we love. That's how we win. With an immediate counterexample. Let's watch. Why would you stop me? 
I saved you. That's how we're gonna win. Not fighting what we hate, saving what we love. <laughs> <laughs> She Be saved what she loved, Finn. Finn. And then there's an immediate thing that they hate, having a success, successful attack. She saves Finn from saving everyone else. <laughs> Which is the people that he loves. Because right, at this point, they don't know that, that everyone inside the bunker has left. Like At That's this right. point, they think that everyone's... Actually, you know, at this point, everyone still is inside. Yeah. So Rose is like, oh, the things you love, that's not important. The things right. that I love, that's important. So I'll so save that. Just which to be you. clear, the things that Finn loves that he was trying to save was all of her friends too. She sacrificed all of them for him. I don't have an explanation. I mean, if his attack had worked, he would have delayed the First Order's penetration of this door until they brought in another one. Mm, yeah. Which is probably five minutes out at this point. But I mean, but, but that's better than like they're 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 watching their friends die right now. That's right. That's right. Okay, it gets weirder. So we see this is how far away Finn mm -hmm. and Rose are. They're super yep. far away. I don't know, several miles, several miles of desert. Hard to tell how far that is, but it's a distance. Right. I mean, it's a distance that they needed these ships to cross. <laughs> and it took minutes, yeah. And then he drags her inside. This is Rose on some type of, I don't know, cargo net or whatever. Like, cross the desert. He crossed the desert so, with her. So, yeah, these the, the First Order is sitting out there for hours watching Finn drag this body across the salt <laughs> flat. So, like, we're just going to let him go. All, All right. right. And we're not going to advance. We're going to let him get inside first. Yeah, then we'll go. He's got. Yeah, no, he's got to get back. I mean, literally, it would take hours because not only yeah, you're not, you're, yeah. you're below walking speed at this point. That's right. You're dragging. You're you're dragging a human with you. You're not even. You're not even on your shoulders. You're like you're dragging them. You're so right. slow. How does he not get some rope situation across his shoulders at this point? Because he can't be dragging her like that the whole way. No way. I mean, I get it. It's a combat situation, and he just got in a crash, so he's probably not thinking right, and so he had all this distance to think about it <laughs> to think about it <laughs> but he was too frazzled he's too shell-shocked in order to, to think about it and he's he's so unaware of his own body he's like i'm not even tired i can't even feel how tired i am <laughs> i'm just going to continue maybe, to drag in this awkward way maybe he's adrenaline rush because he almost died and instead of dying he watched all his friends die an adrenaline so rush you know, that is sustained for like two, three hours. Two, while three dragging. hours dragging. <laughs> yeah, I mean, okay, yeah, yeah because he's, he turns around and he looks back at him. He sees all these giant walkers. Like, that, that'll get my legs pumping. Yeah, no, so yeah, he, he's starting to calm down. He turns two, around, gets an adrenaline hit from the scarediness, and then he starts going again. And he starts to calm down again, and then he gets another he hit. Gets, <laughs> he turns around and gets a little fix, gets a little yeah. <laughs> jacked up on adrenaline. <laughs> he comes back, he's addicted to his own fear. Actually, I think this happens. I think this happens, actually. Okay, I was looking at these walkers. Mm -hmm. So so I think they're both called AT-ATs, but here's the AT-ATs from the original series. Look at their feet. Yeah. The little, it's like a little, like a, yep. like a table leg. But it mm -hmm. also has these four little like leaves that come out the gravel yep. floor. Now, the AT-ATs from the First Empire are bigger, and they have these feet that only push back, or they only point back. So my thought of this is, isn't this a very tippy walker like like if something lifted its leg too high it would just fall forward right because it doesn't it doesn't have yeah. it doesn't have a foot out in front that it yeah. could do use to push down to keep it from falling like you you just fall forward yeah it needs some kind of foot or claw or extension uh, specifically on from the, the front leg. side exactly yeah, on the front exactly. side the back so, side isn't that important because you can get the, the counter torque from the rear legs hmm What's really important is the ability to hold the front foot. It's it's to upright. keep the the to not fall forward or backwards. You need to keep the center mass in between the legs. That's right. If the center mass ever rotates in front of the front leg, you're tipping mm -hmm. forward. And that's so assume, this, these things these things look quite forward tippy, just by looking yeah, at the volume. They look like a lot of masses here. Although it could be balanced, and the center mass is right in the middle. 
-hmm. It's still a poorly designed front paw. Right. And so I feel like the rebels should be very aware of this. Mm -hmm. And your goal is to make this part, make the butt pop forward. And then the whole thing collapses forward. It has no way to stop itself from falling forward. Okay. It's, yep. it's bought it. It's bought it. Yeah. That's a huge weakness. Huge. Plus weakness. you can, you can attack from behind because the guns are facing forward. One, two, three, all facing forward. And I think these are fuel containers, these cylinders on the back. Mm -hmm. Just exposed fuel. Blow it up. Oh, really? That's I bad. So. That's yeah, bad. Right? right? That's bad. Also bad from the First Order. Why, why did Hux come into the base, the Rebel base, after they penetrated it with the battering ram cannon? Because is, this base isn't secure. This is the top dog. Like and there could be bombs, booby traps, yep. snipers, sacrifice, sacrificial yep. suicide people in here. Like he doesn't know. He needs to be back safe away. I mean, the rebel's goal would be to kill, to cut off the head of the snake. And that's, right. that's Hux right here. That's Don't Hux. go inside. Don't go inside. There's no reason for you to be there. Hmm. No reason. I mean, gosh, the rebels, what they could do is trigger a, a timed bomb so that it collapses the cave. And if Hux is inside, right. then he's inside. dead. He's dead. Yep. Yeah. No reason for him to be here. No reason. I guess the only reason that I can imagine is because Kylo Ren wanted to go down. So if, oh, yeah. and so he, he you know, Hux and Ren have this like, like if you're doing it and I'm doing it, then, then I, yeah, I have this little mono a mono thing. Yeah, yeah. Administrator v force user. Okay, it gets weird, more weird. So there's like these, they call them crystal critters, but they're dogs. Mm -hmm. They're dog friends. Yeah, they're dogs. And so. Why are they friends? Like, they're super critical, but why? Mm -hmm. Listen, to one. Where'd the crystal critters go? Why? Follow me. I don't know why. What are you looking at me for? Follow him. So I like but, the scene. Super cute. I, I really mm -hmm. like the scene because mm -hmm. because they hand off power from leadership. They hand off leadership mm -hmm. from Leia to to um to Poe. And it's important for the crystal critters to be there because they show the rebels the way out of the cave, the back entrance. What I don't understand is why was this critter hanging out here? Like they, they didn't have an established relationship. Like they didn't have a, a scene where they're feeding the critters and they're becoming friends. Like they just met. Why does so this the care critters, the, the critters must be force sensitive and can tell that the rebels are nice and kind hearted. Does the critters not realize the rebels are terrorists? <laughs> That's right. I mean, the critters are, they're looking out for their own survival. Why would they help these people? Yeah, who cares? People? Who cares about these humans? I mean, it, it got to be a force explanation. These things are a little force sensitive. The rebels are good, kind hearted people. So the, the doggies are like, they're good people. Let okay, me help yeah, them. Help them. Uh, I mean, this one particular dog was like, I hang out and help them. Gosh, it would have been better if there was like three or four. Because then it's like, well, maybe it's their species. They just mm -hmm. look out for other people. Like, all right, fine. Because mm -hmm. it is detrimental to their own survival. They have a secret right. way out. And just get out. they're telling a predator, humans, right, where it is. Or, or even if it's not a predator, even if it's just an unknown, like unknown. you still don't, yeah. you still don't want to help them out. Sure, sure. Boy. I don't know. Yeah, they're, they're friends though. Okay. Not not everything can be the force did it. That's the force did it. That's the only way I can think of it. Okay, so this is now on the Millennium Falcon. Yep. This is this is I think this is Finn, and he's fingering through the books. These are the Jedi books that I mean. Th these are the Jedi books that were in the tree that that Luke thought he burned. So that means that Rey stole these and put them in she, the Falcon? She didn't steal them. She scavenged them. She scavenged them, yep. I mean, she is a she, scavenger. She scavenged cultural artifacts from a different group of people and brought them back with her. Yeah. I mean, it would be hard to turn off that instinct. She's like, that's worth a lot. Even if it's not monetary, knowledge-wise, let me keep it. Ah, uh, that's a good point. And she just, she has to compulsively Gosh. take it. Yeah, okay, you've completely convinced me. Because that's right, because she spent almost all of her childhood, all of her teens, and a good chunk of her, of her, what, I mean, the rest of mm -hmm. whatever her current adult is, thinking like that, scavenging just all the time. That's yep. her, that was her every day. And so you, she would like constantly have this pro program running in her head, like how much value is that? Should I take that? How much value is that? Should I take that? 
and yeah these books priceless take it price take it yeah although why finn ends up with him i don't know but oh she left him in the falcon and then he knew that they were there i guess so he's like rifling through her stuff just looking for weapons and, and, and maybe this is this is why he's good at weapons mastery he just whenever no one needs his attention he's like mm, i'll check out some weapons check out check out some weapons is that a personal items of a person i'll go through that personal items of another there. person could be weapons it could be weapons mm -hmm. wasn't that thing like people would hide guns inside the bibles what if there's a gun in here there's a blaster hmm. you don't know a little tiny blaster <laughs> that's right a jedi tiny blaster tiny blaster yoda's blaster heck yeah and this is everything that the rebels need, according to Leia, is the people. They don't need weapons. They don't need ships. They don't. They just need the people who love 12, each other and care for each other. Twelve people, two droids, and some snack for later for Chewie. Yeah, for Chewie. <laughs> yeah, he's not part of the group. He's just the food. I mean, <laughs> that's farming. <laughs> uh, brutal. Brutal. Yeah, and you want How the did... freshest meat possible, so you keep them alive. That's right. Gosh, this is not enough to run a rebellion. It's, it's not enough. It would feel like if I was there, I'd be like, ah, it's maybe my time to just step on out of here. Like, I got a, like a high school reunion next week, so like, I just want to go see, you know, just catch up to people and like gone. Yeah, catch up, <laughs> yeah, yeah, just gone. Let me. I'll be right back. Gone. In fact, I would actively turn to the first order and sabotage. That. It's, it's too much. I can't. I mean, Although I would okay, be stopping okay. in a terrorist organization. Gosh, you wouldn't support the First Order, but you're like, I see which way the wind is blowing. I got to I gotta position right. myself so I'm not executed. Let me right. disappear, go back home. You know, I was a smuggler or something. Like I, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know, position myself so I don't get executed and tortured and stuff. I mean, I guess I would go be a scavenger in Jakku. Yeah, right? why not? Like, why not? Empire doesn't care. Yeah, right. This kid, this kid's not a Padawan. And you can tell, you can tell he's not a Padawan by his work ethic. Yep. Look at this terrible sweeping. He's not moving. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, move that hay. Gosh, terrible sweeping. Gosh, he goes outside and he looks at the stars and he's like inspired to be a Jedi or whatever, but he's not gonna get accepted into the Jedi order. This sweeping's Absolutely. terrible. In fact, he's a danger to the galaxy right now. He's just what wielding force powers I untrained yep. i mean he's a danger he needs to, he actually he needs to be executed Jeez. but i but i see it <laughs> <laughs> i see it because if you have force sensitive people floating around mm -hmm. then they can get turned mm -hmm. by the dark side mm -hmm. in fact there's probably some fairly dark aligned although they may not be force users people in this place because i could this is all like the weapons dealers right gosh that's right imagine and, if they learned how to weaponize his force abilities in fact, got the he, yeah, yeah. And he's getting abused by his owner. Mm -hmm. So he's got, and he's early in childhood. So he's creating these, his, this traumatic mm -hmm. mind state that mm -hmm. is filled with fear. Mm -hmm. So he's a force user with fear. And we Where's know where fear? that goes. Fear leads fear to anger. Leads to anger. anger. Anger leads to hate. And then hate leads to suffering. This guy needs to be executed. Sweet needs to be executed. In fact, let's just kill all of the children. Whoa. In fact, I'm on Anakin's side now. I get it now. Yeah. Yep. That's right. Because if, if okay, wait, let's think about it. If Anakin's taking down the Jedi Order, yep. he's going to leave a bunch of semi-trained, force-sensitive kids out yep. of the dark side. They're going to get turned. They're going to do evil yep. stuff. For the benefit of the galaxy, Anakin needs to take out the younglings. Because they're the largest threat. I mean, not immediately, but they're going to train up, do evil stuff. Right. So actually, Anakin's slaughter of the younglings was one of the best things he did. Correct. I'm convinced. I'm convinced. So that was yeah. The Last Jedi. That's The Last Jedi, yeah. So coming up, will anybody start making light speed weapons? I think the answer is no. no Somehow. But they should. But we're saying we kind of built up a reason why light speed weapons shouldn't be built because Holdo is actually a coward. Yeah, that got lucky and killed a, a good chunk of people. Yeah. yeah. Who are these kids going to become who are doing the sweeping? Um, they could become very dark forces in the galaxy. I think so, because they're, I mean, even if the Jedi Order was 
still up and running, then they would still be too old to be trained. That's right. How much more can the First Order lose? They've lost a lot. Forgetting about Force stuff, like ships, Starkiller base. I mean, the amount of I see what you're saying. assets they've lost is huge. At some point, they're, they're losing too much money to continue the war effort. That's what you're saying. Yeah. I they just cannot rebuild fast enough. Um, and, and then is everyone it, force sensitive? <laughs> yeah, just just everyone has yeah force sensitivity. Finn, weapons master, force sensitive. Rose, she can the hear hearing. the force. Mm-hmm. The children doing sweeping. Yep, they can bring sensitive. they can bring brooms to their hands. That's yep. incredible. Yep. I suspect that Poe has some type of force sensitivity, and that's why he's such a good pilot. Yeah, possibly. Because what was he doing before being a pilot? He's, he's a smuggler. He's Spice a smuggler. smuggler. Yeah, but that doesn't mean expert combat pilot. How did you become expert combat pilot? That's right. Doesn't like incredible reaction different. times. That's a part of why uh, pot racing is so good, or it's why true. why Anakin's so good at pot racing. He has like premonition, twitching, twitch reaction speeds. Maybe that's just every force user just filters to the top. That's right. That's why they get screen time. <laughs> that's right. And all the little people have no animosity. Yeah, I'd be so pissed. So pissed at these people that are gifted talents. That's right. It'd be so annoying. All right. See you next time. Next yeah, time we're doing time. The Rise, the of, Skywalker. Rise of Skywalker. Another barn burner. Should be good. Yep.